Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is day two of the Docker Zero to Interview Hero series. If you are preparing for interview and someone asks you, explain Docker architecture. That's the easy part, right? But the real challenge comes when they ask you scenario based questions. That's where most people get stuck. That's why I have made this video with 20 important questions that can that can help you handle tricky Docker architecture topic. Just a heads up, I will only be covering question and answer. So make sure you have already understood Docker before watching this. If you haven't watched day one of Docker basic, please go and watch link is in the description. So let's get started. Starting with our first question. Can you explain how Docker architecture works in simple term? Here's how you can answer. Docker has three main parts. Docker client, Docker daemon and Docker object like images, containers and volumes. The client is what we use to run commands like Docker build or Docker run. These commands go to the Docker daemon which does the heavy lifting, building images, starting containers, etc. They talk using REST API and the actual apps run inside containers, which are created from images. Moving on to our next question. Your Docker build is hanging. What part of Docker architecture would you check first? Here's how you can answer. I would first check if the Docker daemon is running since the client depends on it to execute commands. So I would run systemctl status Docker or Docker info for that. I would also check for issues in the Docker file or network problems pulling base images. Moving on to our next question. How does Docker handle communication between client and the daemon? Here's how you can answer. Docker uses a REST API for the communication. The Docker client send commands like build, run, stop to the Docker daemon, which actually performs those tasks. They talk over a unique socket on local system or TCP for remote connections. This separation lets you control Docker from anywhere. Moving on with our next question. You want to run containers on a remote machine. How does Docker architecture support this? Here's how you can answer. I can set the Docker host environment variable or use hyphen H flag with the remote machines IP and port. This way, even if the Docker daemon is on another server, I can manage containers from my local machine. Moving on with our next question. What is the difference between Docker image and container in the architecture? Here's how you can answer. A Docker image is like a blueprint or a recipe. It contains everything you need to run an app like code, dependencies, OS layers. A container is the running instance of that image, like using the blueprint to actually build and run a house. Images are read only, containers are live with a writable layer. You can run multiple containers from same image. Moving on with our next question. You are seeing slow startup times for container. What would you check in the Docker architecture? Here's how you can answer. First, I would check if the image size is too large as bigger images can take longer to download and start. Then I would look at the containers entry point or CMD. Maybe the apps inside is taking time to boot. I would also check volume mounts as heavy input output can slow things down. Lastly, I would inspect if there's any network delay due to Docker's bridge network or DNS issues. Optimizing these areas usually helps speed up container startup. Moving on with our next question. How do storage layers work in Docker images and containers? Here's how you can answer. In Docker, an image is made of layers where each layer represents a change, like adding a file or installing a package. When a container runs from an image, Docker adds a read-write layer on the top. The image layers are read-only and, and only the top layer can be changed, which is the container layer. This makes images lightweight, reusable and efficient because Docker reuses existing layers instead of duplicating data. 
moving on with our next question can multiple containers share same image how does docker architecture handle that here's how you can answer yes multiple containers can run from the same image docker stores images once and when containers start they use that shared image as their read only base each container gets its own read write layer on the top so they run independently but efficiently share the common image layers underneath this saves disk space and speeds up container startup moving on with our next question how does docker ensure isolation between containers here's how you can answer Docker uses Linux kernel features like namespaces and C groups. Namespaces gives each container its own isolated view of processes, networks and file systems. C groups limit and allocate system resources like CPU and memory. This ensures containers runs independently without interfering with each other or the host system. Moving on with our next question. your container is not reaching another container where is docker architecture might be the issue with here's how you can answer i would first check the docker network setup if containers aren't on the same user defined bridge network as they can't talk using names i would verify they are connected to the right network then check firewall rules exposed ports and that the service inside the target container is actually running and listening moving on with our next question how does docker handle resource allocation for containers here's how you can answer docker uses c groups control groups to limit and isolate cpu memory disk input output and network usage per container I can also define resource limits with flags like hyphen hyphen memory during container run. Moving on with our next question, why is my container using more memory than allocated? Here's how you can answer. Possible reasons would be limits weren't set using hyphen hyphen memory or the process inside is spawning in outside the container. I would verify using docker inspect and also check for memory leaks in the app itself. Moving on with our next question, what's the role of docker engine in the architecture? Here's how you can answer. Docker engine is the core component that includes the docker daemon, CLI and rest API. It's responsible for building images, running containers and managing the full life cycle of docker. Moving on with our next question. If the docker daemon crashes, what happens to the running container? Here's how you can answer. Containers keeps running as they are just processes on the OS. when the daemon restarts it can reconnect and manage those containers using unless uh, they were set to auto remove moving on to our next question can docker containers interact directly with the host os here's how you can answer not directly containers are isolated via namespaces however using volume mounts or host networking containers can interact with the host file system or network if explicitly allowed moving on with our next question what's the difference between bridge and host networking in docker here's how you can answer bridge creates isolated virtual networks containers talk via internal ips host shares the host's network stack faster but no isolation choice depends on the app's networking needs moving on to the next question how does docker handle file system changes in container here's how you can answer each container has its own copy on write layer changes doesn't affect the base image This makes the containers lightweight and ensures image remains unchanged across runs. Moving on with our next question, what happens when you restart docker daemon? Here's how you can answer. 
Docker daemon reconnects to existing containers unless they were auto removed. Containers set with hyphen hyphen restart policies like always will be restarted automatically. Moving on with our next question, why is my container failing to start with OCI runtime error? Here's how you can answer. That's related to the runtime layer responsible for creating containers. Likely causing is a misconfigured entry point, uh, permission issues or incompatible runtime settings. Moving on with our next question, how does Docker ensure fast image builds and reuse? Here's how you can answer. Docker uses a layered cache system. Each Docker file instruction creates a layer. If nothing changes in the earlier layers, Docker reuses them, making build much faster and efficient. Thank you for watching part 2. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and share it. Comment below with the scenario based questions you have faced in your interview. I would love to hear them. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss day 3 and for more such videos.